What's up, babes? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Maya, if this is your very first time here. So today, y'all, we are going to be doing a very detailed beginner's eyeshadow tutorial. I am going to be giving y'all four looks. Yes, four different looks. So we're just going to take turns on each eye. It's not going to be both eyes for per look, so calm down. <laughs> but we're going to do four different basic looks. And I'm going to walk you guys through it. I'm going to give you some tips that I have learned along the way, as well as end it off with this basic full face while I give you guys some eyeshadow palette recommendations. So we doing it all today. <laughs> Before we hop into it, please make sure that you hit subscribe below if you have not yet so that you are updated when new videos come out. Also, make sure that you hit that notification bell as well so that you are updated when new videos go up. All right, my loves, let's hop into it. All right, y'all, so we are gonna hop right into it, but I just want to go ahead and do the brows really, really quick. I am using my Precisely My Brow pencil from Benefit, and I'm creating somewhat of a fluffy brow, but I'm not going to laminate them today. I just want to give us a nice little base foundation for all this eye work we're about to do today. But it obviously has been a while since, since we have done a Makeup for Beginners video. So I'm excited to do this one today. And I did get this request a couple weeks ago. And I was like, you know what, girl? We gonna do that next. I'm scoping out my brows with my soft matte concealer from NARS. And we are gonna just go ahead and hop right into these eyes. So today I wanna give tips and I wanna do four different eye looks. So that really simple, easy beginner's eye looks so that I can give you guys a good variety of some options for beginner's eyeshadow. So let's go ahead and zoom in and let's get right to it. Okay, so first things first, let's talk about eyeshadow primer. I feel like a lot of people who are starting off with um, eyeshadow feel like you don't need a primer and since you could not be more wrong about it. Okay, you cannot be more wrong. The issue with not using a primer is the fact that it will not last throughout the day. While it might, <laughs> depending on if you use shimmers or mattes, while it might look okay initially, Throughout the day, it ain't gonna work out. So, if you cannot afford or you don't wanna go in with an actual primer, then you can use your concealer. Um, your regular skin tone concealer or concealer that's one or two shades lighter than you is perfect. Or you can go in with a base. My favorite eyeshadow base is the P. Louise base. The shade that I use is Rumor One, but it's pretty, pretty light. They do have this in other shades. I believe you can buy this on the Morphe website. This is my favorite because it does completely cover the lid. Whereas stuff like Urban Decay Primer and some other primers, they don't completely cover the lid. And I feel like, what was the point? That's, that's just my opinion, but I love this stuff. So we're gonna do a real quick demonstration of primer on this side, no primer on this side. And what I'm actually gonna do is take a little bit of that soft matte concealer and mix it with the P. Louise and put it all over this lid. Some people like to blend out their concealer or their primer with a bigger brush like this. I do not. I like to take my sponge and just blend it out. And we are actually gonna dip into the Jackie Ina Asashia palette and I'm gonna dip into credit right here. On this side, I'm just going to kind of sweep it into our corner and try to diffuse those edges just a little bit. And then we're gonna go into credit on the side with primer. And this is just a quick demonstration. We're not really, you know, coming up with a look right now. But if you can see, not only can we kind of see more where it is, the placement is better, the contrast is better between what's, you know, your regular lid and everything, whereas this one's kind of fading into the skin. So before we hop into the different eyes that we're gonna be doing today and explaining, I want to show you guys the most basic eyeshadow brushes that you need. So the first type of brush you need is a blending brush. This is just your basic blending brush. You want it to be a little bit bigger in size. You also need a smaller blending brush. I would definitely recommend having two different sizes of blending brushes. And every brush I'm about to name, I would recommend having two of each. Yeah. You definitely need a paddle brush. So this is a brush of this shape. Definitely would recommend having two of these. This one is another paddle brush, but it's a little bit smaller. So two paddle brushes, maybe one small, maybe one big, it's perfect. You also wanna make sure you have like a liner brush like this, cause this kind of brush is perfect for like going underneath the lash line or smudging out something on the liner area. And these few are dirty, but you definitely wanna make sure you have a good pencil brush. 
And these brushes are more dense at the end, but they're very small, so they help you to really pack color in into creases so that you can blend them out. And it's just very precise placement. We're gonna be doing four different looks. I'm gonna do two on this eye and two on this, this eye. I went ahead and primed this eye off camera, and we are just going to do a simple blended look. For this eye, we are just gonna go into our Soft Glam palette, and I'm gonna go into the shade Mulberry. That way, you know, we got something neutral, but we also got a little bit of color. So I'm actually going to be taking this brush, and this is a double-ended medium sweeper and diffused crease brush. So we got a blending brush and a paddle brush. With the paddle brush, I'm gonna dip into Mulberry. And first, I'm simply going to just start to stamp the shade along the lid. So right now, pretty much all we are doing is building up the color but we're also making sure we're not taking it too, too far. You want to make sure when you're doing this that you don't just take your blending brush and just start doing like this because that, that ain't what you want. That's how you start looking like a raccoon, especially if you're using a deeper color to do something smoky. So you want to keep the eyeshadow on your lid and slowly bring it up. That's about kind of where I want it to be before I start to blend it out because I don't want it to be too, too crazy. Cause you can just start to diffuse that shade. I'm just gonna do it right here on the end. So you can kind of see what happens when you go in circular motions and just kind of start to blend that outwards. And we did not add any extra product to this brush. I'm just kind of going around the edges of what's already there to diffuse. And how far out you want this color to go is up to you, but you wanna do that with your sweeper and then just use a clean blending brush to diffuse. You can work as much as you want, as long as you want to make sure that you are getting the results that you need, but baby, that's that. Two different brushes, one color, just make sure this is clean, pack on the color with that, blend it out, period. And that is our beginner's smoky eye. If you want to clean it up, an easy way to clean it up or to make it look a little bit more cat-like is to take your concealer and go into your paddle brush and kind of create a line kind of like a cat eye situation and then move that downwards. And then it kind of just gives it a whole different look. This can be more of a going out type of situation when you do something like this. I think doing this kind of makes it look like you did a little bit more than what you actually did. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's a little trick that I like to do all the time. Since we are on this eye, we are just gonna do the bottom lash line super, super quick, but we're gonna skip it on all the other ones, so. I'm gonna take this liner brush, which I told you guys about. I'm going to dip into Mulberry, and we're going to put this right along the lash line. This is why we wanna use a liner brush because if you use anything bigger than this, it will get all over the place. And my recommendation is when you're going in with darker colors, just leave them right there on the edge. Don't bring them all the way across because then things start to get a little messy. And then with one of our pencil brushes, I'm gonna go into a lighter shade. And in this case, I'm gonna use Sienna. I'm gonna tap off the brush and I'm gonna go underneath that shade just to kind of diffuse it out. The lighter shade, you can bring more towards the inner part because it won't look as raccoonish but you just blend it out like so and make sure it is a really nice ombre situation under the eye. You always can use a sponge with some concealer on it or leftover concealer to kind of like diffuse that out. But that is our beginner's smoky eye. We also not doing the lashes today because girl, who got the time? You know what I'm saying? Actually, you know what? Let's just throw one on so you can kind of get the full effect. That's good enough. <laughs> Girl. I went ahead and primed this eye off camera and on this side, we are going to go into a matte crease with a shimmer lid. But I'm gonna show you the easiest way for a beginner to do that. So for this eye, I'm actually gonna use my Bare Necessities palette from ColourPop. So the first thing I'm gonna do is grab the small, smaller blending brush. And I think I'm gonna go into Tabloid, which is right here, obviously is my favorite shade in this palette. And the first thing we are going to do is put this in the crease. It depends on if you want to have it in just this area or all the way around is your preference. However, the easiest way I say to do it is to just put it probably all the way around. But what you wanna do is hover it 
in that upside down U over your lid. So we are using a combination of sweeping motions and circular motions to kind of get that color in there. You also can stamp it, meaning this, just like that. And all you're trying to do is avoid just this, this little piece right here, because that's gonna help you to really see where it is and get your placement better. Make sure you work most of that color off of your blending brush and you can start to diffuse. If you want, you can change to a different brush if you're worried about you know, moving it. But once most of that color is on your eye, you can just start to go in circular motions and diffuse the edges. Kind of the same thing that we did over here. Next, I'm gonna go into the shade Genie, which is right here. And I would say that the best, easiest thing to do is to either use your finger or you can use your paddle brush. If you use your paddle brush and do Genie, you can just sweep it across like that. But you wanna make sure that you're paying attention to where you're putting it. So you wanna make sure that it's right in the middle and you're just gonna use small little bitty strokes to move it where you want. So don't just go crazy with this girl, just take your time. <laughs> and it's not gonna look perfect when you first put it on there because you are gonna have to do one more step. If you do have hooded eyes, you wanna go a little bit above your hood. And then I'm going back into the blending brush that I use and I am going to just not add any extra product. I'm just gonna go right around that U and blend it with the brown shade. Sweeping and circular motions to do this and they will just start to blend together. Now if you wanna add a deeper color into the crease, this is the time where you want to do this. Just for the sake of demonstration, I am gonna take my pencil brush and I'm gonna go into Taboo, which is a deeper brown shade. And this is where you can add it right there. If you do do that, all you gotta do is go back into the brushes that you already use for each shade and just kind of make sure that blend is good. And you've created kind of a two dimensional, three dimensional type of eye blend. Let's not forget that today's video is very beginner friendly, so we're not trying to be super, super, you know, extravagant looking extra. I'm just trying to show you guys the basics of how to do things and the easiest way that you can go about it. And an easy way to make this look even more professional, like I said over here, is to just take, take that concealer. And it just does wonders. I feel like it does wonders. Cause you also can diffuse this and make it not so sharp. It just does something to the look, you know? We're gonna pop on a fake lash even though it's not really glued down. I'm gonna have to hold this cause it's not glued, but y'all see the, y'all see the vibes. You know what I'm saying? You see the vibes. <laughs> Went ahead and primed this one off camera and the next thing we're gonna do is a blended shimmer look. I'm dipping into my Huda Beauty New Nude Palette. We gonna make this pink. We doing four different eye looks today, so you know what I'm saying, I can go pink today. <laughs> and the first thing I'm gonna do is take a smaller blending brush and we're going to, uh, and we are going to do our crease. So I'm gonna dip into Love Bite, I think. We're gonna go purple. And I'm going to start to put this into my crease area. So with this, we are kind of doing two different shimmers and then a matte crease. You can start by either going in circular motions to start to blend it out initially, or you can just stamp it. And we're literally just stamping it about right there. That's all we need. If you wanna hover over a little bit more, you can do that, but it's unnecessary. And just as a disclaimer really quick, I will say you do want to invest in better palettes. Don't buy your eyeshadow from the beauty supply, please. <laughs> the cheapest you should go, I think is LA Girl. We're gonna talk about that in a little bit. If you are a beginner and you really wanna get into doing more eyeshadow, do not use cheap shadows. It's gonna be so much harder for you. Use shadows that work, that are pigmented, and I will give you some recommendations here in a moment. And then I'm gonna clean this off a little bit. I always have a towel right here. That's a good thing to do. And I'm gonna dust around this as we have been doing and just diffuse those edges to get rid of lines of demarcation and harsh lines. You can use a clean blending brush for this or you can just clean this off and do it with the same brush. 
and if you get a little bit more advanced you can even blend it out with another color with a small blending brush and then you have like an ombre situation but this is beginners so we ain't gonna get into all of that <laughs> we're just gonna keep it pretty basic today with one color matter of fact no nah, i think we're gonna do that on this side next we are gonna take a sweeper slash paddle brush and we're gonna go into our shimmers we're doing two different shimmers the first one i think i want to do is kinky because this is a very similar color to the purple one in the crease but it's a shimmer so that's how we kind of know to put it right next to it because of the similarities in it it's just a different finish like you're not going to put anything like this right next to it because then you're going to have blending issues so you got to kind of be able to eye it and see it so we're going to put this literally right here we're going to take small strokes and just start to move it around on that lid when it is meeting this side and that side, we kind of keep it a little bit lighter because we know we're gonna be blending it into something else. So you kind of got to think about that with how it is that you do move it along the lid. And you also want to make sure you are not just making a line of demarcation, like don't do like that, because then you'll have that line. You can go back into your blending brush and go in between those with no extra product and just kind of blend those two together how far up you take this depends on your eye shape and what you want the eye to look like i always like going above a little bit above my crease my physical crease because it makes my eyes look a little bigger and you're able to see more of the eyeshadow and i recommend that to everyone don't just stop at your crease next we're just going to go into one more color and i think i want to do daydream which is a really pretty light pink we're using the sweeper again and I'm just going to start to put this on the inner part of the lid with these shimmer shades I would recommend sweeping versus stamping because that stamping works better with mattes and sweeping works better with our shimmers now the thing about shimmers in this inner part is you want to make sure that it is blended right here so right now we're kind of not worrying about it but you don't want to just start to take it up because that's when you create a problem but we are kind of pushing it over the other pink shade just like that if you can maneuver in there if you want to like clean this off on your towel and then go right here to just kind of like push that up into the skin area it will start to diffuse that and make it not a harsh line. Or you can take a clean like pencil brush and stick it in there and start to blend that upwards. And we have our blended shimmer. I think after we do this, I, I'm gonna do this one on this one before we do a little face. Cause this is cute. Y'all know I love my pink baby. I love my pink. <laughs> so the last look that I'm going to show you is just a little bit of color blending. So when you are going into blending different matte shades together, you want to make sure you set your primer. So I'm going to take a little bit of my Laura Mercier translucent powder and I am going to set my primer. I'm going to dip my sponge into it, dip it on my hand, what I usually do. And we're gonna go into a light layer of translucent powder all over the lid. And the reason that we want to make sure we do this is because it will help the matte shades not to bleed. And when they start to bleed, they get darker and they change colors and that's gonna cause an issue for you when you are blending them together. You don't necessarily have to do this if you're using just one matte shade i would say because you're just dealing with that one color you're not worried about it blending into something else and staying the shade that it is if that makes any sense at all it might not but girl work with me okay <laughs> but you do want to make sure that you set for this one so with my sweeper brush i'm going into this shade right here which is the deepest pinker shade that we have and i'm going to just do what we did on our first demonstration patting it onto the lid not taking it too too far out so we're just gonna kind of leave it like that and i took this up a little bit higher so that the edge of it is not hiding in my crease so we really can see the ombre we're going to create and we do not want to use this we don't want to use this 
for the next color. No, we need small blending brushes for the next one. <laughs> when you're thinking about blending a color into something else, you want to make sure you go with the next similar color that's closest to that shade but lighter. So I'm going to go into this pink. We even honestly could use this orange if we were going orange, but I think I'm going to go into the pink one. And with a small blending brush, I'm gonna lightly dip into that. And I'm lightly taking this on the edge of this. I'm kind of using circular motions just to kind of give us a pinky tone right there on the edge. But I feel like the trick to this, number one, we don't wanna go too far in here because we don't want that color to come up that way. We kind of want more things to come out that way, if that makes sense. But this is gonna be your transitional color. So we don't wanna go too, too much in with this shade. We just kinda want this to be our transition. You can already see it coming through because we're just slowly going in the smallest circular motions literally on top of that other shade. It's not outside of it, it's on top of it in a little, a smidge past it. But the the reason you want to go in circular motions is because it kind of can it just kind of diffuses those edges while you work. And the big thing about this is making sure those edges are diffused while you're working because that will help with the blendability and help the next color to sit on top a lot easier and more seamlessly. And now all we need is one more shade. <laughs> when you're doing something like this, I would recommend either cleaning it off or getting a whole nother brush because this can easily get messy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I am gonna go ahead, I kinda wanna do this one because this one is a little light for my complexion. I kinda wanna dip into this one here. And this is going to be our last shade. So we're doing the exact same thing with circular motions, kinda layering over that color and just lightly going in circular motions and blending outwards. And I just wanted to kind of give you guys a quick and easy way to do this. Not that a lot of you guys are doing these types of looks, but since this is an eyeshadow video for beginners, I kind of wanted to give you guys a lot of variety and easy ways to do these types of looks. This color is super light for my complexion, but it's still showing up because of our base, so that's good. But you definitely can see how we have created that ombre. It's all about layering the shade on top of the previous one and making sure each shade has diffused edges. If you feel like you've lost the color or you kind of want a little bit more, always go into your middle shade with the clean brush or clean it off work it in the middle. That will allow you to really get the ombre you're looking for if you're messing up or you feel like you're losing it. That middle shade is key to the success of the ombre. Our purpose is we did not want this to be too crazy. We didn't want it to take over the whole eye and look like a raccoon, but we still see the deeper shade, the more pink shade up to like the more pastel pink shade. That is our color ombre. I'm gonna recreate this off camera, throw on my lashes. We're gonna do the most basic of basics. <laughs> um, beginner's face while I give you guys some eyeshadow palette recommendations. So I really wanna do just a super, super quick face. We're going into primer. Oh Lord, my lash is coming off, child. Mm -mm. This primer is my Laura Mercier primer with SPF. And then the foundation that we're gonna use is the NARS Natural Radiant, and this is in Macau. So I've already told you guys to make sure that you are avoiding the really, really cheap eyeshadows. I do not recommend super cheap eyeshadows. If you are on the lower end and you're trying to save some money, some really great eyeshadows to use are ColourPop eyeshadows. Not only do they have small palettes, but they have really big palettes to for that you get, you know, more bang for your buck. One of my most favorite ones is the ones we use, which is the Bare Necessities palette, because it has everything you need. It's super warm toned. You got mattes, you got shimmers, but they also have a Stone Cold Fox palette. So if you're more into the cooler tones, I never use this, that's why it's not even open. <laughs> but if you're more into cooler tones, they have this one as well. But we also know that ColourPop has very small palettes palettes too, so those are perfect. Each of them kind of have like a little bit of a theme. Choose which colors you want and everything like that, but then they also have the bigger palettes. They have a big rainbow palette. Um, ColourPop is great like drugstore prices for an amazing eyeshadow quality. If you ain't worried about the money, 
<laughs> then I say Anastasia. Of course, there's a lot of eyeshadows out here, but um, I love Anastasia's eyeshadows. I think they are some of the most top tier eyeshadows that it's not like Pat McGrath prices, but it's still like super duper 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 high quality. I am using my NARS Radiant Creamy in Macau to highlight. Some of my more neutral recommendations as far as palettes are concerned is number one, I would definitely say is the Minted Every Night palette. And it looks like this. It's super neutral, super more compact. You have shimmers, you have more neutral shades. Um, I also would recommend that Bare Necessities palette as well. I also really like for neutral the Jackie Ina palette, which I already showed you guys from Anastasia. I think that is a really, really great neutral palette as well. And it also has a little bit of color in it. So if you wanna play with some color, I feel like that is a very good palette. If you are a pinky nude type of person, for sure go for the Huda Beauty New Nude palette. It is beautifully pink, baby. That's what's on our eyes right now. And it not only has the shimmers and the deeper, you know, pinker shades that's on the eyes, but we have some neutral pink shades as well. We are skipping a cream contour today and we're gonna go straight into setting. Of course, I'm setting my face with my translucent from Laura Mercier. This might be one of the quickest faces I've ever done in my life. <laughs> also, cause I'm trying not to talk too much as well, so. I'm trying to be a little more focused today, y'all. A little more focused. And then the other parts of the face I'm setting with the deeper, uh, medium deep from Laura Mercier. I'm about to use my Coco Naughty bronzer from Fenty Beauty. I did mention LA Girl eyeshadows, you guys. I really love LA Girl high eyeshadows. I feel like LA Girl high eyeshadows are very much more high quality than they used to be. Um, LA Girl palettes do sell at Ulta, so if you wanna check those out, definitely do that, and it is a more budget-friendly um, brand. But I love their eyeshadows. And we are taking a blending brush to sculpt out the nose with this bronzer, too. I am just gonna add a mascara on the bottom lash line. We're not gonna go in with any type Type of eyeshadow down there. I just kind of want to keep the party up top. We're also going to skip out on blush. I'm just going to do a quick highlighter. This is my Nabla Skin Glazing Highlighter in Lucid Jungle. With a loose eyeshadow brush, I'm adding it to my nose. Everywhere that I usually add my Cupid's bow. Cupid's bow. <laughs> a little bit on the cheek, y'all. And this is our face. We are pretty much done. I feel like that was real quick, sis. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys, there is a dupe for the new new palette. This ColourPop palette. I don't know how to pronounce this name, but I will try to link it below. It is eerily similar, but way more affordable. So if you like the new new vibes, definitely check out this palette. We are throwing on just a regular gloss today, sis, and we done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see this basic full face. And we're gonna wrap this video up. All right, my loves, that wraps it up for today's video. I hope this video was really, really helpful for you guys. Oh, I hope it was detailed. I hope you learned something if you are a beginner. <laughs> if you guys like this video, give me a big thumbs up. Comment below, let me know what you thought of the video. Also, make sure that you hit subscribe below if you have not yet. And I will see you guys on the next video. Bye.